Well, I have my uh, workout shirt on. It says, come with me if you want to lift. And it has Arnold Schwarzenegger on it. Hey, right, so I'm here oh, to pump oh, you up. Yeah, I'm here to pump you up. <laughs> remember Saturday Night Live? Remember those guys? Yeah. I came to pump you up. Now, what if I took these 15 pound weights and every single day I worked out with them? What would happen? Everybody pull off. <laughs> Probably, yeah. They'd get too light. Huh? They would get too light. There you go. I was waiting for somebody to give the wrong answer and say, oh, you're going to get stronger. No, not really. Because at a certain point, my muscles are going to get used to these 15 pound weights, and I'm going to plateau, and my muscles are not going to get any bigger. Because I've gotten into a routine. I've gotten stuck into a routine, I've gotten stuck in a rut, and there's nothing to further challenge my muscles. It's good to work out, it's good to lift weights, it's good to have a routine, but if you don't switch it up and you don't change it up, you're going to plateau and you're not going to grow. You're not going to get bigger muscles, it, nothing's going to happen, right? Right. Every morning I like to get up with a cup of coffee and I like to eat me a, a nice bowl of shreddies, big full bowl of shreddies. Pour the milk in it and just eat it right out. Yeah. Now, <laughs> maybe the first week, the shreddies taste really good. They're delicious, you know? Oh, and maybe by the second week, they're like, well, you know, they're still okay. A month down the road, oh gosh, shreddies again? Yeah. I'm eating shreddies? Oh, come on. There comes a point where you eat the same thing over and over and over and over again. and over again and you you lose your taste for it you don't like it anymore it's not like the first day you've had it the first day you tasted shreddies you're like oh man this is so good yeah I could eat this every day but then you start eating it every day and you're like oh man I'm sick and tired I burn out on shreddies I'm sick and tired of these shreddies You've got to switch your breakfast up. You can't have the same thing every single day. You've got to switch up your breakfast. You've got to switch up your workouts. It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. And, you know, there's two ways to get to Perth. You know, you could go, you could cross over the Andover Bridge, and you could take that way to Perth. Or you could keep going straight and go through the Tobik Narrows and go through the Reserve. Even without thinking, I usually cross... The the, uh, the Arthuret Bridge. Yeah, I use I usually cross the Arthuret Bridge, and then I go and I take that way, and I just do it all the time without even thinking. If I have to go to Perth, that's the way I go. Yeah. Come back same way. Yep, yeah. come back same way. Change it up. Right? Yeah, exactly. You got to change it up. Yeah. See, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm going and I'm like, oh, I got to go to Perth again. That's just a bunch of thirty minutes of nothing, you know. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Tobik way. I'm gonna go through the Tobik Narrows, and I just gun it and go right past the Arthuret Bridge, and then I take that scenic route, and I'm seeing birds, and I'm seeing squirrels and porcupine and skunk, and I'm seeing deer, and you know I'm just enjoying the nature, and then oh I get to see the the, the Tobik River, and, and I go through that rock cut and see that little cabin that's tucked away there, and you know it's then I cross the dam, and it's just different. You know, you gotta switch it up. You gotta change it up. You know, because every time I go to Perth and take that, and what I really hate is going across that Arthuret Bridge and I get behind a transport. I'm like, I'm gonna have to follow your butt all the way to Perth? Oh, come on. You know, and then, you know, I'm used to going like 100, and then I'm suddenly to put, 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 put going eight the whole way. <laughs> and I'm, I'm veering out and looking to see if I could pass this guy, and I'm like, oh, man. Good thing you're not behind me, you'd be going 70. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So, so you, you've got to change it up. you got to switch it up, mm -hmm. right? You know, if I'm going to be painting a wall and I just get done with the coat, can I just immediately go to the paint and start putting on a second coat? No. I can't do it. It's going to smudge. It's going to smear. It's going to look tacky. i got to wait for that, for that paint to dry before I put on the next coat. And sometimes, you know, like uh, you, you got to change up your, you got to change up your living room. I remember, you know, my mom had her kitchen in this mossy green and had this wallpaper up that was like this vintage, fancy pictures of scrolls and 
swirly things and stuff. And it was a 1970s kitchen. It was right out of, of the 70s. Well, you know what? The 80s came. And it's like my mom said, I've got to switch this up. This no longer fits this decade. I'm sick of looking at this moss green paint and this weird, why did I even choose that wallpaper? And she switches it up, you know? And then each decade, it's, it's her, you, the kitchen looks different. The living room looks different, you know? So just like working out, they say no pain, no gain. That's true, you know? you you got to have pain before you could gain muscle. But you got to switch up your workout. There's a time that you got to switch it up. There's a time you got to switch up your breakfast because you're going to get sick of eating shreddies every day. There's a time you've got to take a different way to Perth because you're going to get sick of going the same way every single day. Now, I've said all that to say this. Spiritually speaking, it's the same thing. You've got to switch up your spiritual routine. Because, you know, when you first get saved, you are encouraged to read your Bible. That's good. You're encouraged to do your personal devotions. And many people say, well, I suggest you start out with the daily bread. Just that little devotional every day, and you start out with that daily bread. Just like shreddies, you're going to get sick of the daily bread after a while. You've got to switch it up. You've got to do something different. Now, about a couple years ago, at the turn of the year, the Lord, the Lord instructed me. He says, you know what? I want you every single day to read a chapter out of Deuteronomy to read a chapter out of the book of Matthew, and to read a chapter out of the book of Revelation every day. So every day I read a chapter out of all these three books. And I did this for like, what, almost two years. Two years. And then one day I got, I got, I sat down in my easy chair about four o'clock in the morning. I cracked open the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm sitting there reading. And I said, <clears throat> okay, Deuteronomy chapter 17. Womp, 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 What? Okay, uh, I, I, got, I got to get my brain in here. I got, I got to focus. I got to concentrate. I'm, I'm, I'm distracted. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 17. Womp, 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 womp. I don't understand a thing this is saying. What is wrong? I, I, I just can't get into this. And the Lord says, stop. You're done reading the book of, of Deuteronomy. You're done reading the book of Matthew. You're done reading the book of Revelation. You need to switch it up and you need to do something different. I'm like, but, but Lord, what do I do? Where do I go next? And I was, for a week, I was in this very weird spot. I was in this very weird place for a week. I didn't know where to read in my Bible. I didn't know what devotional to pick up. I, didn't, I was out of my routine. I was going nuts because I'm a creature of habit. I love routine. I love to know what I'm going to do in the next hour. And I was just driving myself nuts because it's like, I'm, you know, so guess what? For a whole week, I did not read my Bible. <gasps> oh my goodness. You didn't read your Bible for a whole week? You must have spiritually starved to death. Actually, no, I didn't. It's just like my workout. If I'm, if I'm doing a certain routine for, for like weeks at a time, and I got to switch it up, before I have to switch it up, I'm going to rest for a whole week. Why? Because when I rest for a whole week, it gives my body to catch up with all the workouts that I did, and then it, and it allows my muscles to repair what has been ripped and what has been torn by those daily workouts. So for a whole week, I rest and I do nothing. And then I pick up a new routine. I do something different. I switch it up and I change it up. You know, that's why people fail at their New Year's resolution. Well, January 1st, I'm hitting the gym and I'm going to work out. And they go for a week and why? Because they're on the treadmill every single time. That's boring. Get on the recumbent bike. Lift some weights. Do something different. And people can't keep their New Year's resolution because they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. They plateau. They don't learn. They don't grow. They're not challenged. And there's going to come a point for the new believer when they read the daily bread, it's going to be like reading a Fun with Dick and Jane. It's, it's going to be like see, spot, run. See, spot, catch the ball. It's going to be so elementary, it's really not going to mean much to you because you've grown past that. There comes a time when a baby's just sucking on that bottle and sucking on milk. And there comes a time where it's like, you know what? He wants some Gerber. He wants some of this, those peas and carrots. He wants some of that banana cream custard, whatever it is. 
And then after he eats that for a while, you know what? He's ready to try meat for the first time. He's ready. He's grown his teeth. His digestive system's prepared for it. Give the kids some meat. You feed your baby milk all the time, it's not going to grow. It's not going to get stronger. You've got to give it something else. So sometimes you have to switch up and change your spiritual diet. Sometimes you have to sit and watch the paint dry before you can put on the next coat. Sometimes you have to take a different way to work to refresh your mind and to refresh your memory, to, 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 to switch things up and to make things new. So I'm going to ask you, why do you read your Bible every day? Why do you do your devotional? Now I'm saying there's nothing wrong with routine. Routine's good. You know, having a good spiritual habit of reading your Bible at a certain time every day and your devotional a certain time every day, that's great. But why do you do it? Why do you read your Bible and do your devotions? Because you were told to? Because you feel guilty if you don't? Why do you go to church? Why do you come here? Why do you sing praise and worship songs? You know, why do you go? Why do you do anything spiritual? Why do you do anything faith-based? Why do you go to any spiritual event? Because if you don't, people start talking. Oh, well, that person's not here. Maybe they backslid. You know, or or, or, or why do you read your Bible? Because because you're expected to, and you're going to feel bad if you don't, or somebody's going to talk if you don't, or you feel like you're you're God's going to be mad at you if you don't read the Bible. Is, 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 it, is it a habit? Is it a ritual? Is it a routine? Or are you addicted to it? Are you in love with it? Do you do it because out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of obligation, or because you want to? <laughs> Even good habits can become bad when they grow stale, when they grow stagnant. Because you don't grow, you're not challenged. You've got to switch things up. You've got to change things up. And this even happened with Jesus, and this even happened with the disciples. You know, you have to change things up. You have to switch things up. So uh, let me go ahead and read to you out of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 23. Okay, it says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, And after he, that's Jesus, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And when the evening came, he was alone. Jesus was all about ministry. He was all about healing the sick. He was all about setting the Pharisees straight on their twisted, messed up attitude doctrine. He was all about teaching his disciples to do the right thing so that when he left, they would know how to carry on. He was all about teaching and preaching in the synagogues and in the different towns. But you know what? There was a, there was a time when he even had to get away. There was a time where he had to break with his routine, break with what he was doing constantly, and get away and get along by himself. And if our Messiah, if Yeshua did that, how much more do we need to do that as believers so we won't grow stagnant? Because if you're just doing your daily Bible reading and your daily devotions because you're expected to, because you were told to, because you're going to have false guilt if you don't, then those are not, not, not the right motivations to be reading your Bible, and those are not the right motivations to be doing your personal quiet time, your devotionals, because you're going to grow stagnant. It's going to become a ritual. It's not going to be. It's not going to be out of genuineness. You know, you guys, if you just give your wife flour for no reasons, wow, they're really surprised. Wow, he gave me flowers today. That's great. You know, and it's a surprise and it's a nice thing. But what if every single day your man came to you and gave you flowers? It's not special anymore. It gets old after a while. Oh, you're giving me flowers again? Oh my gosh. Couldn't you think of something different? What about like a box of chocolates? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, if you do something all the time, it no longer becomes special. It loses its, its uniqueness and its specialness. So it's like you can't give your wife flowers every day. She'll appreciate it maybe for the first week, but after that, it's good. Oh, man, this is getting old. He's got to switch it up. 
So we see that Jesus got away by himself to pray. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he, Jesus, said to them, his disciples, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Not only did Jesus have to have some quiet time and some alone time, some away time, some time where he broke with his regular schedule, some time where he broke with his regular routine of doing things <laughs> and of ministry, he even knew his disciples needed that. Because you get to a point where you give and give and give and give and give and give and give, and, give and then you all of a sudden you realize, I have nothing left to give. You burn yourself out in ministry, working for the Lord, because you get this false guilt trip saying, oh, you have to do this. This is expected of you. If you don't, you're backsliding. If you don't, you're, you're not right with God. And that's a falsehood. You've got to get away. You've got to rest. You've got to switch things up and change things up. You've got to get alone with God. You've got to change the program. And Jesus said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And when Jesus said that to his disciples to get away to a quiet place to rest, do you think he said, okay, guys, now that you're by yourselves and now it's just us, I'm going to set you through the paces. Drop down and give me 20. Go ahead and quote me the first book of the Torah. You know, do this. No, he didn't put him. No, he didn't do training. He just said, chill out, rest, take a nap, sit by the water, just enjoy the, just enjoy the, the grapes and the fish and the bread and the nuts that we have. Just enjoy the food and the cool, clean water. Just chill out and relax. Don't worry. Because he knew that, that they needed rest. Why do we have Sabbath every week? Six days you shall work, and on the seventh day you shall rest. Why does God say we need to rest? Because he knows we have to change it up. Because if we're working seven days a week and there's no break in that work schedule, we're going to become drones. We're going to become stale and stagnant. We're going to become burnt out. We're going to burn the candle at both ends and have nothing else left to give. So we need that rest. Why? So it's called recreation. It's not only called rest, it's called recreation. Where do we get the word recreation from? <coughs> from? Recreation. Recreation. We are being recreated when we rest on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is getting out of your routine and just chilling out and enjoying time with God. And enjoying time with God's people and God's family. Your brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's not worrying about your daily routine. Not worrying about work. It's, it's switching it up. It's changing it up. It's getting some rest. It's getting away from the everyday. Because if you don't, you're going to burn out. If you don't, you're going to grow stagnant. If you don't, it's just going to become rich, meaningless rituals. And that's not what we want. We need to switch it up. We need to change it up. We need to have some rest. Luke, chapter 5, verse 16 says, Jesus often, what does the word often mean? It means many times. Jesus often withdrew to, a lonely, uh, to lonely places and prayed. <coughs> He got away for a while. Now, Tim, I'm going to ask you something. Yeah. You, you're having a great time here fellowshipping with everybody, right? All right. And staying here. Yeah. But you can't tell me you didn't enjoy being alone on the road with just your bike and just you and God. Oh, yeah. I love it. What, what? I mean, it was so special because it was just you and him. Right. There was no routine. There was no nine to five. It was just you pedaling your bike and just talking and fellowshipping with God. Absolutely. You weren't necessarily you weren't reading your Bible while you were biking. You were just <laughs> fellowshipping with God, man. Yeah, he was waving me here and there. And, uh, yeah, you were just oh, here, play music there. Just opening your spirit up to his leading. Yeah. And if God said go here, you went there. Go there, you went there. You couldn't have done that if you were stuck in a box and if you were stuck in a, a routine and, and stuck in a stagnant kind of place where you didn't allow the Spirit to move. You've got to open yourself up to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Routine's good, but if routine gets in the way of the leading of the Spirit, then you need to kick your routine out for a little bit and change it up and do something different. That day I opened up to the book of Deuteronomy like I did for the past two years and started reading it, and I didn't understand a blessed word I was reading. I read it over four or five times, and I'm like, God, what's up? Why can't I understand this? He said, because it's become routine for you. It's become a ritual for you. 
You've read this for two years straight. It's time to switch your diet up. It's time to change it up and do something different. It's time to allow me to lead. So for a whole week, I didn't read my Bible. That doesn't mean that I wasn't out of fellowship with God. That doesn't mean that I was in a backslidden condition. That doesn't mean that something was spiritually wrong with me. Just like after lifting weights for a whole week, I have to take a day to rest so my muscles can recover. Spiritually speaking, I had to let my spirit rest so my spirit could recover. So I could digest that spiritual food I've been eating for the past two years and prepare my spiritual being for that next meal God had me on. So it wasn't that I was away from God. I just wasn't doing what I normally did. It doesn't mean that I wasn't hearing from God or, or hearing from his word. What I did over that week was think about the past two years and the things that I read and the things that stuck out at me. And I started meditating on them. I started thinking about them. And I was rolling the word of God over and over in my mind, digesting it, making it a part of me. And then I was fellowshipping and praying with him saying, okay, God, you know, I'm not reading your word. I'm not reading the Bible. I'm just chilling out. Speak to me, God. What do you want? What do you want to tell me? Where do you want me to go? How, where do you want to lead me right now? Because I'm totally open for that. And by the next week, the Lord said, okay, you start on this book and this book and this book now until I say not to do it anymore. I had to switch things up. Think if God forbid something happened and all of us believers were carted off into a prison camp. We had no Bible. We had no church. We had no fellowship. We had no other Christians around us. We had no hymn books. We had no cross necklaces. We had no religious items or articles at all. Would you survive as a believer? Would you grow as a believer? Even without a Bible? Think of how the prophets did it. Think of all those who were, all the martyrs, all the, all the persecuted believers that are in prison, that are in labor camps, that are in Holocaust situations. They're closer to God than any of us, and they don't even have a stinking Bible. Amen. Amen. They don't have the Word of God. It's just all up here, and it's just yeah. all here, and it's just all God speaking to them. Sometimes we get so wrapped up and so enamored with, with, with the physical things of our faith. That we don't leave room for the spirit to move and to work inside of us and through us. The Bible is important and I'm so glad that we, that we have it. But why do you read it? And if you read it every day, why? And if you're reading it every day, are you getting anything out of it? If not, then something's wrong. Maybe you should put it down for a while and just say, God, lead me, guide me. What do you want me to do? Where do we want me to? I know this is a non-traditional message. I'm sure you've probably never heard anybody tell you, stop reading your Bible. <laughs> I'm sure you've never heard any preacher or teacher say, stop doing your devotions. But if you are in a place and you're stagnant and you're stale, you've lost your first love. You don't have that fire in your bones and that fire in your belly and that, that seal for the Lord. Then maybe it's time to set this stuff down and just say, Lord, I'm open. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of my routine. I'm getting out of everything and I'm just going to let you lead me. I'm going to let you guide me. What I'm saying is lose your religion and start developing your relationship. That's what it's all about. It's not about religion. It's about a personal and intimate relationship with Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. You know, like if you pour concrete, an hour after you pour concrete, can you walk on it? No. No. Yeah, it's tempting to put your handprint or footprint in there. But you've got to wait for it to dry before you, you, you've got to wait for it to set before you can walk on it. You've got to wait for that foundation to solidify. And that's the same thing with the Word of God, with what you read. You've got to let it solidify. You've got to let your food digest. If, if you eat food, let's say we just had a big meal, Monday night meal, and then immediately we go out and run a marathon. You're probably going to pass out on the side of the road and vomit and get sick to your stomach because your belly's full and you're trying to run on a full stomach. You've got to stop and let the food digest before you go out and run a marathon. Same thing with the Word of God. Sometimes you've got to allow the Word of God to digest within you so you can apply it to your life, so it can spiritually build up your spiritual muscles. I want to read to you another passage in Luke. Again, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. See, we read here, it says, 
And back in Luke 5, it says Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, plural, lonely places and prayed, which meant that, that Jesus himself had special places that he went to to be by himself, to be alone, to get out of the routine, to get out of the nine to five, to get out of the hustle and bustle, to switch things up, to change things up, to be alone and to be intimate with the Father. He had more than one place, lonely places, plural. Do you have lonely places? Where you can get away and be with God? One of mine is the trail at Ralston Lake. Mm. I love just going there and just walking around and just walking and talking with God. And sometimes I'll be singing, making up songs, you know, and it's just me and God. Ralston Lake is, is, is a much better church than any building I've ever been in. I feel closer to God at Ralston Lake than I do in most physical buildings we call churches. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And then it says in 11.1, one, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. It might have been his favorite place. We know that possibly one of his favorite places was the Garden of Gethsemane. Because he went there in his final hours. So it must have been a very, very special place to him. We've read passages where he would go by himself and then he would get his disciples and say, Hey, it's time to get away. It's time to switch things up. So a habit and a routine is good until it becomes mechanical and meaningless. And then you need to switch it up. Then you need to change it up. So, if you're in a place, if you're in a spiritual place, and all of a sudden you've lost your desire, you lost your desire to read the Word of God, you've lost your desire to, to, to do your daily devotions, maybe it's you're burnt out, maybe you're burnt out because you've had the same meal every single day, you've been doing the same thing every single day. Maybe all of a sudden you have no desire because you need to switch it up and you need to change it up. Or maybe you're in a place and you just feel like you may be sinning or you may be in a backslidden condition because you've lost that desire. That's nothing but demonic fear. Because there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so, you know, fear, it says, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Satan condemns and God convicts. Conviction is when you get that feeling that you know you need to change, you know you need to repent, you, need to know, you know you need to do something different, and it motivates you to do so. And when you do, you feel better. Condemnation is even after you've changed, you still feel guilty. After you've made that repentance and after you've made that change, you still feel bad as if you're still in that sin. That's the difference between conviction and condemnation. So sometimes maybe you're in a place spiritually where you feel lost. And you just simply don't know what to do. Maybe you're in a transition period. Maybe, maybe you just need to just be quiet. What happened after Elijah the prophet was battling the, the, the prophets of Baal? And the contest on Mount Carmel. And he's sitting there performing miracles left and right. People being raised from the dead and, and this enemy being defeated and this miracle happening. And all of a sudden, you know, he challenges the prophets of Baal and builds this altar and they're cutting themselves and screaming out to Baal and he doesn't show up and Elijah's like, well, maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's on the toilet. Why is it he, you know, if you read the Hebrew, that's kind of the indication that it gives you. Maybe your God is using the bathroom. You know, and then all of a sudden he says, it's my turn. He builds the altar, prays, and fire comes down and consumes the altar and the water and everything on it. And then what happened after that? After all the miracles, after all that power and, and all that closeness with God, Oh no, Jezebel wants to kill me. Oh God, why, why am I alive? Oh God, I'm the only believer left. And he goes and starts having a pity party for himself in a cave. And then, you know, all the earthquake happens. God's not there. Lightning and thunder happens and fire happens. God's not there. It's that still small voice that God was there. It wasn't until Elijah got quiet that God showed up. Elijah was in the wilderness. He was in the mountains, in a cave. And God shows up. You think of all the times that God shows up. He shows up in the dry and dusty places. Oh yeah, sure, he's on the mountaintop. But we forget he's in the valley, too. Sure, he's on the high places and in the mountaintops and on the great places of our life. But we forget he's also down in the valley, down in the desert places, down in the places where we feel like we've lost everything and lost it all. You think, when did God show up? When the children of Israel were out in the wilderness and Pharaoh was right on their tail. 
And that's when the Red Sea split, when they were in the wilderness. When did angels come and minister to Yeshua? When he was in the wilderness. When, where, did the, where did the manna come from? When they were in the promised land? No, when they were in the wilderness. God supernaturally provided them with food, with bread from heaven. It was in the desert places. When did they get water from the rock? It wasn't when they entered the promised land. It's when they were in the desert. So if you are in the desert places in your spiritual life right now, you are in one of the most awesome, blessed places you could be in your spiritual life. Well, I sure don't feel like it. It's pretty dry, pretty dusty. It kind of sucks. Well, yeah, it does. But you know what? God is going to show up. You stay in that desert place. You stay in that holding pattern until God shows up. Because God's going to show up. He's telling you, you've got to switch it up. You've got to change it up. And he, you were in that transition period, ready to go to the next step, ready to go to the next level in things. I had to take a whole week of not reading my Bible before the Lord led me to the next thing I was supposed to do in my spiritual life. It was uncomfortable. I hated it. I felt restless. I felt aimless. But I knew that's where God wanted me to be. <laughs> but what, what if I rushed it? What if I said, forget it, God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power through and I'm going to read the Word of God anyway. Would I have gotten anything out of it? No. What if I said, oh, man, my muscles are so sore. I feel like I tore something. But I don't care. I'm going to work through the pain. And all of a sudden, my bicep snaps. And I ruin my arm for life. Sometimes we get that false notion, well, I've got to power through it. No. Rest. Stop before you hurt yourself. Stop before something bad happens. Give yourself some time. Rest and let your, let your body adjust and set. I know this is a totally bizarre, totally unusual message. It's probably one that you'll never hear again. But I'm telling you, I was in that place in my life where I was, in, where I was just in a dry, stagnant place because I was doing the same thing over and over and over again. And it became meaningless to me. And I didn't get anything out of what I was doing. And the only way that, the only way that solved that is when I stopped. And I did nothing. I just, I did nothing and I just opened myself up to say, okay, God, what do you want? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What's the next step? And I read to you these verses where Jesus got away by himself. After, after a big, long routine of ministry and circuit preaching and traveling. He did that for himself. He did that for his disciples. If Messiah sets the example for us, then we just can't keep going on and on and on and on. Spiritually, we need to rest. We need to stop eating shreddies and switch to Rice Krispies. We need to stop eating shreddies and switch to Fruit Loops. Maybe that suits you better. I don't know. We've got to stop and let the paint dry before we put on a second coat. We've got to stop traveling down the same road and same path we're going and take a different route, a scenic route, to get a fresh perspective on things. So wait. Don't force it. Listen. Simply enjoy where you're at and what you're doing in time with the Father. Just think, of, just think if you didn't have a Bible, if you didn't have those things to keep you spiritually on track, how would you communicate with God? How would you, how would you develop that relationship with the Lord? How would you do that? So I'm telling you, sometimes it's okay to put everything down and just wait upon the Lord. Where's that song about waiting upon the Lord? I will wait upon the Lord. I will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. Something like that. But yeah, sometimes you've got to wait before you can get your strength. You just can't keep moving and keep going on. I know that this applied to me. And this was the message that I was going to preach last time, and God flipped the script on me. Remember, I usually have all my bookmarks and stuff. I didn't have them the last time I spoke because God said, no, that's not the sermon for this week. Then he said, okay, you're, it, it's, it's the right one for this week. Okay, go ahead and preach it. <laughs> and I still feel weird preaching it because I don't know who's, who it's for. Okay, some people are raising their hands. Good, good. Praise the Lord. So switch it up. Change it up. Do something a little bit different. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, ah, boy, this was a hard one to preach. And I just, I felt like I just repeat myself over and over and over, but I pray that, that, that people got it and somebody got something out of it. 
Because, Lord, I know that there's times in my life where I keep doing the same things and get used to a routine and it becomes religious and rote and robotic and mechanical and meaningless. And I've got to switch it up. And then I go through that weird, uncomfortable transition period where I'm doing nothing. But yet you're letting all that stuff set in me and, and solidify in me and become a part of me so you can move me on to the next place, place so I can digest some heavier, harder spiritual food. So, Lord, as we grow as believers, help us to take the example of Jesus and pick out a lonely place. To pick out a place to be by ourselves with you and just do nothing but enjoy your presence. And just to enjoy our relationship with you. And just meditate and dwell on the things that you've already showed us until you're ready to lead us to the next phase and next step. And we ask and we pray all these things in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom.